so what is uh, the sonar type is it replaces all your uh, you know artifact stores that you generally use to store your artifacts like your container images or jar files or war files okay so most of us what we do we prefer the um, you know the publicly available ones right yes so which are free to use but this sonar type nexus will replace all your you know in you know, artifacts uh, stores yeah so we'll talk about sonar type nexus basically this is from the uh, the software is uh, nexus and the company is sonar type okay so basically before understanding the need for nexus or jfrog artifactory so we should understand what is an artifact okay so what is an artifact like uh, what do we do with that artifact so what are artifacts artifacts are like the files produced as a result of a build process so it can be anything it can be a simple log file it can be a jar file or a text file or a zip file or a tar tarball file it can be anything including your container images okay so anything that is a byproduct right out of your build process is a build artifact so you cannot just say that your war file is an artifact or zar file is an artifact anything can be an artifact okay so typically these include like distribution packages right zip file okay so the software which we are downloading right the maven as a tarball file tar.cz extension so that is also an artifact okay your exe file your pin file okay your war file container images reports log files etc everything is a build artifact okay so they will be generated out of the build process okay so now where does this nexus fits in our ci cd pipeline so why do we need um, you know uh, artifact store like nexus repository okay so imagine you are working on a java based project okay or a maven based project right so in maven based project we know that we'll have a source code and along with we'll have a pom.xml file so this is responsible for you know defining your complete project information and it will also contain your project final artifact name version and the type of your artifact whether it is a war file or a zar file whether it is a snapshot or uh, um, you know uh, dependency or a release dependency everything we define in the pom.xml file and once we run your maven commands right so what it will do let's say we ran maven package so basically it will generate your final artifact it can be a war or a jar file right so where does this basically reside basically it resides in a system where you ran this mvn command okay if we are running that in your local machine it resides in your local if it, you are running in your jenkins it resides in your jenkins so whenever developer pushes your source code to the github and uh, git will have the latest source code now so now once you push anything to the github through web hooks so it can automatically trigger a jenkins pipeline so here inside jenkins we write pipelines so inside this pipelines it is up to you to include uh, what all to, things to include so the things that we generally include in that pipeline is first we will clone the source code and then we run mvn clean and package command correct so this will basically pack your complete software okay so this resides in your jenkins under the, your workspace let's say for this particular job okay we have created a maven job as the name okay so where does this job resides under varlib jenkins right Mm -hmm. under workspaces a workspace so we will have the name of the job which is maven hyphen job which i used and here you you are going to have your all source files including your target folder where your jar or wall file will be generated okay so from here so we can take that war or jar file at, from this location and then uh, we had seen how to deploy it to the tomcat container so by using deploy to container plugin right so we know this plugin so this basically takes your war file uh, from your jenkins and it will immediately deploy to any server so that is running your tomcat so this is basically what we are generally doing here so we are taking the artifact and we are directly deploying it correct but what if i generating a artifact so which has to be used for other projects so what if i have a ci pipeline and cd pipeline separately right so there is no interconnection so there are now instead of one jenkins server so let's say there are two jenkins server so in one jenkins server okay basically what you did so you build your artifact okay so here you have war file 
so now this ci pipeline is done so there is one more cd pipeline basically this will be triggered probably after merge changes are uh, you know accepted or anything like that so now this is your deployment pipeline so this deployment pipeline so where does this your war file reaches your this pipeline from where it will take right so that's why what we do so we take this war file we'll store it in a common location right and then have this pipeline take that artifact from that location so this is like a central location okay basically in case of maven so maven have maven central repository okay so where maven stores repositories locally but what about the artifacts which we generated locally okay so these artifacts should not be pushed to the central repository so we have to use those artifacts within the organization then what we do we take those artifacts and we push them to our repositories which are basically your remote repositories internal repositories like nexus so we push these artifacts so that they will be safely stored now if anyone wants these repositories right these packages anything so they can directly take from here correct from this location so what is advantage of this location this is completely local to your network that your office infrastructure so no one can access this repository from outside so once you build is done so what we do we will send it to tomcat or we deploy it to the you know environment for running it before running so we can uh, have an option or a step so that will also upload your artifacts to nexus repository okay so as i said rep, uh, your artifact can be your container image right your war file your zip file which you download anything so anything you can push it to this repository so now that is nexus repository so it's a place where we store our artifact so even we have uh, you know premium you know so jfrog is also very good okay but nexus is basically it's an open sourced one okay so they have two versions we'll come back to them so people will prefer nexus in some and jfrog in some organizations okay now what is a repository so it is a storage location so where we store all our packages libraries binary files container images okay so that whenever we need them we can retrieve them okay so uh, like in git they can also be version control but remember version controlling not like it will only store the changes so it will store your complete artifact like that okay so once if you have 1.0 you can also push one 2.0 so examples of such repositories right we have maven central repository right so in fact we have docker hub so what is docker hub again this is an um, you know publicly available um you know repository so basically it is called as a registry right i already told about the difference between registry and repository basically when we talk about nginx images so we call it the nginx repository right so ubuntu repository but we are not storing only nginx or ubuntu we are storing everything all of these so so registry is something which will store multiple repositories right so we don't say it as docker hub repository we say that it is docker registry so what is a repository manager see we have the repository to store uh, all your repositories but there should be a manager right so there should be an ui application where i can see you know the repositories uploaded their data i can control who can log into that machine basically it's a machine repository manager is a software that runs over a server right so i can control i can have login credentials i can you know store and retrieve right i can give access to certain people i can configure certain repositories whatever repository they need i can configure them okay so this is a repository manager basically how we use repository manager is so uh, so if we have uh, you know this is internally to our organization right so this organization has to be protected from outside attacks that's why basically so any system residing inside that organization so we'll cut the cut off the outside internet access right correct so yeah. in our local machine so if you are running maven install or anything so basically these are going to your central repositories which is your mvn central so to fetch your artifacts but this should not be the case in case inside the organization so that's why what we create is we create a repository repository manager like your nexus 
So basically what Nexus will do, Nexus will store all your artifacts. Correct. So but mm -hmm. if it is storing only the artifact, so I can push the artifact which are generated and I can put it here. So the person who needs it, right? This person, he can pull it. But what if this particular person needs an artifact which is there in your central repository? But I don't have access to the internet. I cannot take that artifact from central. Okay, so what we do in this case is we create something known as proxy. So what is proxy? Acting in, uh, you know, in place of someone, right? Yes. Doing something in place of someone. So what this Nexus will do is, so we will not give internet access to any of your internal machines. To only to this Nexus machine, so we will give internet access. That means if I, this user needs something, so the request has to go to your Nexus. And Nexus will forward that request to the outside, like proxying the request. It will face the data to uh, from the internet. Then it will give it to the required user. And what it will do when it fetches that artifact, right? It will see whether that artifact is known to it. So if it is known to it, basically it won't go out. If it is not known to it, it will fetch and it will cache it inside its database. So whenever I need this guy needs, let's say he needs JSON dependency. Mm -hmm. Okay, when he sends it to Nexus, Nexus will see whether that dependency is already there with it. If it is not there, it will go out, it will fetch, and then it will store it inside it first, and then so it you, will serve the user. So you would have multiple such connections: one for Maven, one for Docker registry, and then any, exactly, any... Okay. exactly. Okay. okay. So when next user requests for JSON, so it will go to Nexus. Nexus will see that it is already there and it will serve internally only. Okay, so in this case, you are saving a lot of internet bandwidth because your requests are being processed internal to your organization. So it, this is not going outside. Okay, mm -hmm. and one more thing, as you said, right? So this Nexus has to fetch artifacts from, you know, these central repositories. So we have uh, central repositories for Maven, central repositories for Docker, which is basically your Docker hub. For, um, you know, node packages, we have the NPM package manager. For Python, we have PyPy. Correct. So these are all open, um, you know, these are all publicly available. So we'll configure your proxy in such a way that if, uh, you know if the uh, user or the machine doesn't have the dependency so nexus will know where to forward that request and then from where to fetch that okay so this is complete internal now that is the repository manager basically it will store the artifacts it can proxy remote repositories and cache contents for you host internal repositories so these repositories are the repositories where you don't want to share it with anyone group repositories that means you can group multiple repositories as a single repository okay and then it can enable collaboration between developers you can control who can access you know certain folders who can log in who can you know create uh, these repositories so it's all uh, you know complete administration just like jenkins okay so basically nexus is from sonar type okay it's an open source repository so it serves like a single source of truth for all your binaries and artifacts and also it beautifully organizes uh, organizes all your artifacts inside a inside it so that you can see it from the ui okay uh, it stores artifacts for everything like a maven pack uh, dependencies npm helm charts okay docker images your apt your yum based packages your golang your r, r language based anything so these are all the packages basically it stores so data science libraries of conda right and uh, maven npm r language pi by golang so anything uh, you can store you can basically you can host your own repositories or you can create a proxy repositories so this is the uh, you know the architecture basically you have your nexus repository so you'll have a proxy repository Okay, so whenever a user request or a Jenkins, basically Jenkins also has to run your source code, right? So it, it needs, it pulls the dependencies. Then what this CI pipeline can do? So it will contact the proxy repo, go out of the organization, get all the packages, and then it will uh, store it in your repository. So that's why it is saying cache public components locally. Okay, so next time when CI needs it or any pipeline needs it, since Nexus already has them, so it won't go out okay and there are two versions of nexus the one is in nexus open source which is called open source 
OS, Nexus OS. Okay, and the other one is the Nexus Pro. Basically, it um, also has extra features like staging support, authentication, or then uh, authorization. So there are a lot of um, you know these features are supported in Pro, which are not there in OS. Okay, uh, basically, if you want to integrate enterprise LDAP, okay, so that is not there in your free version. Okay, staging and uh, uh, staging releases and releases. Okay, so enterprise support is not there okay so basically for all our you know use cases right oss is sufficient okay as long as you know how to use nexus and if you're able to handle everything yourself so nexus os is fine and the latest version is 3.37 and i'm going to walk you through the documentation also uh, similarly to jenkins right you can also run it as a service or as a container which means docker container and by default it runs on 8081 so unlike jenkins which runs on 8080 this one runs on 8081 and like any other tool this port can also be configured that's it for this video guys if you like our video consider subscribing to our youtube channel and joining our facebook group the links are given in the description below you can also scan the qr codes being displayed in this video and for any training requirements you can join our telegram channel where we post regular updates on our upcoming trainings you can also whatsapp us on the number being shown here you can also drop us an email for any kind of training inquiries thank you